I was laying in bed, um, doorbell went, I looked at the ring doorbell and saw two armed police officers. Um, so my wife, you know, we opened the gate, my wife answered the door, I chucked on a dressing gown, came downstairs. Um, obviously it's quite alarming, um, you know, the police come at your house anyway. And as soon as I saw them carrying their sidearms, um, you know, they were holstered, um, but you know, ca people carrying guns, regardless of who they are, you know, in a, in a circumstance you're not used to, if you're not at a gun range or something, it's it's a weird feeling. And, you know, I, I was I was shaking, really. Um, I didn't know what was going on. You know, I invited them in, sat them down, and they announced they were here to revoke my license, um, which I found an interesting term. Um, and um, they handed me a letter explaining uh, why. Um, so, yeah, quite a shock. So, you know... I sat down, had a read through the letter. Um, you know, they were, they were very polite. Um, you know, they were quite respectful. You know, they first thing they did was commented on how nice my house was. You know, um, you know, I had a read through the letter and I said, look, there's there's some serious mistakes in this letter. Um, but I said, I know, I know you're not the ones to have this conversation with. So, you know, I guess we just need to follow this procedure and I need to pick that up with someone else. Um, so yeah, the, the chap that handed me the letter was plain closed. I, he didn't introduce himself as an officer or I don't know what his position was, but he handed me the letter, um, and then announced that they were here to take my weapons. Um, which again, I, this was all on body cam and I, I, I pointed out and said, I didn't think we should refer to them as weapons because they're firearms, you know, weapon is something that's used in an act. Um, so yeah, carried on, took them upstairs. I checked some clothes on, took them upstairs, um, opened the cabinet. Again, you know, very complimentary towards me. Um, you know, admired the security and the level of, you know, e everything about it. Um, and yeah, they were, you know, they, they were nice guys, um, commented on, you know, the, the bits and pieces I had, um, but ultimately, um, took all my stuff away. It's it's a real slap, isn't it? How, yeah. how, I mean, after they'd gone, how did that leave you feeling? Um, sad, I think, really. Um, you know, the accusations in this letter point to that I'm reckless, I'm dishonest. Um, there's there's some serious factual errors that they've presented here of claiming I've got convictions from 2006. Um, I've had a firearms license, well, shotgun license since 2012. Um, I don't have a conviction in 2006. I think I'd know about it. But yeah, I mean, e even now it's... Um, it, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like something's missing. You know, they've taken away a hobby. Um, you know, I feel sad. You know, it sounds absolutely ridiculous, but I woke up in the middle of the night dreaming the doorbell was going, um, you know, and, you know, it, it set me off. You know, it's it's pathetic because, you know, they are guns and you shouldn't be upset about you know, material objects like that. But ultimately, this is something I've been doing for quite a long time now. And it's, a, you know, it's a sport I do with my wife. I take my dog along. I shoot with my dad. You know, it's all these little things that are kind of sinking in that they've been taken away from me, which, you know, I think wrongly, really. Um, so, yeah, it's left a bit of a, a bit of a hole, especially just before Christmas when you know, it's meant to be a time of happiness. I'm a bit kind of bit confused and you know feeling a bit let down by the system really what kind of shooting do you do um started out with clay pigeon so um it was an my dad's brother got him and me into it when i was probably 13 14 um so yeah weirdly we lost him um this year um so he was he was a great shot um so he got my dad into it and my dad's other other two brothers which got me into it. And then um, my dad joined the local firearms club in 2014, I think. Um, so I started doing rifle and pistol with with my dad. You know, it's a, a thing we do together. You know, I'm, I'm 36, he's, you know, in his 60s. And, you know, this is a, this is a time I cherish really um, with my dad, you know, it's a hobby of his, it's a hobby of mine. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not your average gun owner, you know, I'm not, I'm not into shooting animals. You know, I like target shooting. I like clay pigeon shooting. You know, I went pheasant shooting and pigeon shooting with a mate. Not for me, not my cup of tea. Um, I, I get the reasoning for people doing it and the requirements of, you know, farmers and deer stalkers. I, I get it, but I'm just a, a normal guy. I own a small business. Um, 
you know i like clay shooting once or twice a month when i can you know pandemic permitting um you know i go up to bisley with my dad and the, the other guy the old boys at the club and you know do some long range shooting but you know nothing nothing dramatic nothing that would suggest any negative character towards me which is why all these combinations of things they've put in this letter just yeah it, it's just it's hurtful really it's a it feels like a bit of a personal attack really i got caught um doing 100 mile an hour on my motorbike in july um yeah no excuse you know it was a dry clear day a new my motorbike it's you know probably too fast for the road and you know i kind of was silly and you know i sped i got caught i've held my hands up um but this letter claims that um i've got a conviction in 2006 which I, i've allegedly failed to disclose which is news to me um apparently i failed to disclose um a speeding conviction in 2014 which um if i didn't put it down it's a mistake um but I would have thought the due diligence that these guys should be doing should have picked that up prior. Um, and there's a the letter says there's an allegation which is evidence of road rage in 2018, which there was no further action taken. That's news to me. Um, you know, using the words allegation and evidence in one sentence, I find odd. Um, the fact that no one's even had a conversation with me about this is also odd and it's happened two years prior to my last renewal so if that was genuine and serious i would have thought i would have had a knock on the door then and my firearms taken at that point um and obviously the the final icing on the cake was having been caught speeding in july um they've got the speed wrong the speed limit wrong in the letter and I've not actually been convicted of it yet. Yes, I've I've sent the paperwork off and pled guilty, but that was on the morning of the the guys turning up. So again, it's it's almost they've decided before the courts have of what the position on this is. Um, yeah, you know, I've got I've got three points of my driving license. I got caught doing a hundred mile on my motorbike. Um, but the claims of being reckless and dishonest, um, it's hurtful. You know, I've, I've, I've got a business I've had since 2013. If I was reckless and dishonest, it wouldn't exist. I wouldn't have any customers. You know, it's, yeah, it's just, it's really sad. And, you know, for someone to be sat behind a desk with the power to do this when actually a phone call or a letter could have sufficed to say, look, there's there's a few questionable things here. Can we have a chat with you? Or even, would you mind surrendering your firearms while we investigate this? Of course, but to send armed police to my house is, you know, and upset my wife and, you know, even my dog was a bit confused. It's, yeah, it just, it's extreme. What can you do so now? The only option I've been given are appeal this in the Crown Court. Um, it feels, you know, it's a probably the wrong analogy, but it feels like they've thrown a hand grenade in the room and shut the door and they're taking no responsibility. Um, I, it's going to cost me, um, what I've been told, circa £6,000 to to do this. Um, you know, I am in a fortunate position. You know, I do, I do make a, a reasonable income that, you know, over the course of how long this takes, I will be able to afford to do that. And I will, because, you know, whilst... I don't understand this is a privilege. You know, it's it's hard to justify after the things that happened in Plymouth, um, you know, why we have, we're entitled to have guns. Um, but, you know, it's a hobby. Um, I'm certified, the, the law allows us to. Um, and I feel like, you know, there's probably a, a finite amount of time where we will be allowed these things um, before things do really clamp down. But I'm I'm going to, I'm going to fight my case because, you know, ultimately I've been accused of something that's not true. Um, they've, I think, almost defamation of character, um, you know, in the things they've said about me. And I've had no kind of ability to say, come on, hang on, this isn't true, that isn't true. And it's a kind of, well, what we say goes now, if you want to argue it, it's going to cost you thousands of pounds. And, 
you know, we're gonna we're gonna fight it to the end. It's like, well, it's not, you know, it, it, this doesn't reflect the world I think we live in, and the you know the powers that we vote for.